with the call of Clemson in Florida. Rob, thank you so much, guys. We will talk about Igor Kulachov as well. College basketball on Fox is presented by Ford. We are back here at the bb &T Center for the Metro PCS Orange Bowl Basketball Classic. Game two, the Clemson Tigers against the Florida Gators. And hello to everybody. Justin Kutcher alongside Bob Wenzel. And Bob, let's just hope that game two is exciting as game one, Oklahoma State one by one, upsetting number 19, Florida State. And let's talk about this game too the Florida Gators they were ranked as high as number five in the country they lost three in a row including to Loyola of Chicago but they rebounded with a victory over Cincinnati and that was big for them well they're up on Duke 17 they're up on Duke 10 with four minutes to go and lose by three okay not such a bad thing obviously Duke mm -hmm. is a great great team and then of course when they lost to Florida State after the game Mike White said that was the epitome of soft whoa okay that's a challenge to your team now, they lose to Loyola of Chicago. Everybody says, oh, man, that's really terrible. But Loyola of Chicago is the best team in the Missouri Valley Conference, okay? Then they come back and beat Cincinnati. That's a rough and tough team. And Chioza took over the game in the last four minutes of the game. He handled the ball, made all the right passes. So they bounced back for sure. And this is the same team that scored over 100 points four times already this year. Okay, so they have to go up against an ACC team in Clemson, which has a very, very balanced scoring attack. Yes, five guys are in double figures for Clemson. Sheldon Mitchell is a terrific player. Reed and Grantham and, and Elijah Thomas, they have a bunch of transfers from four-year schools. So they are a team that's confident, okay? They are playing. They've got the best record they've had in a long, long time at this juncture of the season. Their inside guys might be a little bit too much because that's where Florida is a little weak right now. Their two biggest guys are out with ACLs. So on the interior, I think Clemson has a little bit of an advantage. Florida's better offense especially from the three-point line. All right, so game one, we had the upset. What's in store for game number two? Here in Sunrise, Florida, Clemson against number 22, Florida. It's coming up next. Graham continued their offensive tear. Oh, what Nebraska are out to end KU's 18th straight victory against the Huskers. Fire! Get ready for Big Game Saturday, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on FS1. At Joseph A. Banks Weekend Warm Up Sale, save up to 70% store wide. All dress shirts, 39. All 1905 and executive sport coats, 99. Plus, all sweaters, buy one, get two free. The weekend warm up sale only at Joseph A. Bank. It takes Arby's hours to smoke their new smokehouse chicken. Who else puts this much work into their chicken? Mama chickens, maybe. Arby's, we have the meat. Hey, you know Progressive is America's number one motorcycle insurer. Yeah, she does, Pearl. Best bike I ever owned. No, you're never alone. Because our claim jobs are available 24 7. We even cover accessories and custom parts. We did get an early start. Took the kids to soccer practice. You want me to jump that cactus? All right. That lady's awesome. I don't see a possum. The Orange Bowl Classic is brought to you by Metro PCS, by BBT, and by the Florida Lottery. The Gator fans have come here to cheer on their Florida Gators as they take on the Clemson Tigers to look at the Tigers' starting lineup. On this beautiful day here in Southern Florida, Shelton Mitchell, Marquise Reed, Gabe DeVoe in the backcourt, Dante Grantham and Elijah Thomas up front for the eight and one Clemson Tigers. And for number 22, Florida, coming in with a record of six and three. You've got Chris Chioza, who leads things as the point guard. Kayvon Allen, Igor Kulichov, Jalen Hudson, and Keith Stone. Florida is in white. Excuse me. Florida is in black. Clemson is in white. It'll be Elijah Thomas jumping center. 
against Keith Stone. And Clemson controls a tip. And here is Shelton Mitchell. Clemson feeling confident. Florida is a little bit more at home. Florida's win over Cincinnati was significant in that they showed toughness. Florida much smaller. Faster. They love to shoot the three. There's Kevon Allen, Chris Chioza, who you mentioned in the top. Kind of took that game over. He's off to a great start this year. No doubt about that. How about this against Gonzaga? 26 points, 10 assists against Gonzaga. Gabe DeVoe into the corner. Marquise Reed for three. Has it blocked by Kayvon Allen. Came out of nowhere to get that block. This is an extremely small Florida team with Kulichev playing the four. Nice block right there. Good hustle play on the transition. Inside is where Grantham and Thomas could have a field day against the Gators if they execute correctly. Thomas is 14, Grantham's 32. Here's Grantham looking for Thomas and a good job by Stone to get around him, but it's out of bounds off of Keith Stone, who's 6'8", 245 against Elijah Thomas, 6'9". They list him at 237. So what do you do when the ball goes inside and you're a small team? Well, you double team. You can double team on the catch, or you can double team and wait for the guy to put the ball on the ground and try to create a turnover. So you got to win more than one way. You've got to do something different in the post. Shot clock down to two. Mitchell has to put up the three. He does, but the rebound by Jalen Hudson who goes up high for that one. Big time scorer, averaging 19 a game. Hudson, too strong off the glass, and the rebound is chased down by Thomas. Here comes Clemson trying to push and a really good job by Chioza read that crossover here's Kulichov pulling up for three off the back of the rim and the rebound to Marquise Reed and a foul is going to be called here against Keith Stone that's his first the team's first Kulichev scored 34 in his first game in a Gator uniform he transferred from Rice but he had been at Arizona State before that so Stone has to go to the bench immediately and Hayes comes in in his place, number 13. Igor shoots so many threes, they call him three Gore in uh, Gainesville. Reed, underneath, Thomas, short, and a good box out, a rebound by Kavarius Hayes. Chioza against Mitchell. For those watching who don't know a lot about Florida, they made the Elite Eight last year. And this guy with the ball made a shot at the buzzer to get them to the Elite Eight. Chioza made a three at Madison Square Garden to send the Gators to the Elite Eight. What a game that was, too. That guy's a tremendous, tremendous player. I think they feel he should be a little bit more verbal on the floor. Kind of a quiet leader. Four on the perimeter with Thomas inside. Grantham, 32, can play inside or outside. DeVoe rattles in and out. Still no score yet. Both teams playing man-to-man. -man. Allen with the handle for three. No. Good offensive rebound by Hayes. Teams look a little tentative right here. Gulachov, the fadeaway. And a good rebound here by Elijah Thomas. Thomas spinning underneath. There's Grantham for the dunk. Good feed by Thomas. Well, somebody got caught in a switch because Chioza was on Grantham, and that you do not want that matchup. Hudson for three. Jalen Hudson shoots at almost 44% from three-point land. Averages 19 a game when he was at Virginia Tech for a couple of years, averaged seven. So he's found his wonderland right here in Gainesville, Florida. Thomas underneath has the ball poked away, gets it back. Shot clock down to nine. DeVoe gets the screen, shot clock at four. DeVoe fouled on the floor by Kavarius Hayes. That'll be number one against Hayes.
Let's take a look at post defense right here. Ball goes into side to Thomas. Hayes is on him. Okay, and right here, you're going to get a double team from underneath by Igor. And as a result, they get a turnover. So when the ball goes inside, it's not necessarily a bad thing. If you could force turnovers by big people handling the ball, it could turn in to a positive for the Gators. Gorzak Gak has checked in. Underneath, good feed, good cut. And the finish by Marquis Reed off the assist by Dante Grantham. Nice play by Grantham, huh? 6'9 guy who can handle the ball on the perimeter and pass with his left hand. Pretty good. Hudson, all the way to the hoop, showed his shooting prowess from the outside, and now his ability to attack the hoop. He's got all five for Florida so far. You don't average 19 points a game with scoring only one way, right? He is a volume scorer. Nice matchup here between he and Grantham. Reed. Good patience underneath, but unable to finish as Thomas tips out of bounds by Thomas, and that'll lead us to a break. 5-4, Florida leading here early on. All five points by Jalen Hudson. Clemson going to the glass. Grantham, the senior, doing it. Four Florida leading over Clemson here early going in this one time now to check in with a third member of our team Jessica Blaylock. Hey Justin Jalen Hudson playing for the Florida Gators this year after transferring in from Virginia Tech now he had to sit out last season to satisfy transfer rules but he still wanted to stay engaged even though he couldn't play so he decided to be the hardest working guy at practice physically and then mentally he would pay close attention during games act like a coach give his teammates feedback when they came to the bench he said that if he wasn't vocal he wasn't doing his job and it looks like all that work from last season transferred over to this year wow look at this by Jalen Hudson a three a drive layup in traffic and a super dunk I wonder what else he's going to do tonight in for Florida, number 24, mid-distance guy. Here's David Scarra in, attacking the hoop, the transfer from Valparaiso, as it poked away from him. He's also from Croatia, so they have a great, great basketball development program in that country. Hudson for three now. He has been all the offense for the Gators, has all ten. And Grantham got poked. He says, no, I'm fine. Don't worry about it. But I would worry about Jalen Hudson right now. He can score in a hurry. Best game of the year where he had 36 against Gonzaga out there in the PK-80 tournament where they won. Mitchell got fouled. He'll go to the free throw line. That's against... Keith Stone, that'll be number two against Stone. Hudson moving without the ball. Watch as he comes off this screen. Drives to the basket and a slam. Nobody home defensively on that at all. He's made two threes. He's the kind of guy that you cannot go over the top in on pick and roll situations. If he's got the ball, the best thing to do is double team him and make him give it up. Grantham goes to the bench. Mitchell misses the free throw. Still 10-4, Florida. Nice Mark hedge Dunnell. there, huh? Yep, by Mark Donnell. Transfer from Michigan. Underneath, cutting to the hoop, and now taken away here by Mitchell. DeAndre Ballard couldn't handle a pass. Mitchell transfer from Vandy. Scott is a very good player. First game here. Very good athlete. Foul on the floor. I believe that's going to go against DeAndre Ballard. Number 24, DeAndre Ballard, his first. 
First against Ballard, fourth team foul against the Gators. Lots of substitutions early here for uh, Brad Brownell. He's getting a lot of guys in this game and out of this game. Here's Sims. Sorry, DeVoe's going to handle the basketball as a point guard now. He's a very experienced player. Benell for three. Got it. How about that? You mentioned it. The grad transfer out of Michigan knocks down the three. He's six of eight from three-point line on the season. That's what he does. Gioza cut off along the baseline. Ballard. He walks. Travel in violation. Turnover here for Florida. Ballard's only a freshman from Atlanta. He's getting a lot of good minutes as a mid-range guy who comes in the game for energy. He's going to come right back out. Mike White in his third year for the Florida Gators led his team to the Elite Eight, as you mentioned, the SEC Coach of the Year last year. They were 27 and 9, 14 and 4 in the SEC. Brad Brownell in his eighth year as the Tigers head coach and a good finish here by Marquise Reed. Both of these two coaches have gotten big jobs in Florida and Clemson, of course, are big jobs after having success at lower level jobs. Okay, Brownell was at um, UNC, UNC Wilmington, Wilmington and Wright State as well and Louisiana Tech for Mike White. Step back three for Allen, no. And the rebound chased down by Amir Sims. Small team in for the Gators. DeVoe, the hesitation, shot affected by Hayes. Chioza attacking. And a good job just standing ground for a bunch of Clemson Tigers. A chance for Clemson to take the lead on this possession. To give you some sense of things, when you say Florida is small, what does that mean? Well, Igor is guarding, he's playing the four spot, this guy with the basketball right here. Playing the four. Defensively, that is a problem. He's giving away five or six inches on whoever he's guarding as the four man. Now, it can help offensively if you got a four man who's 6'9 chasing him around at the three point line. And Igor Kulichov able to draw the foul. It was a blocking foul. Kulichov, see, see we got here, Sims 25 on him. Big, big size differential. Hudson splits the double team, goes to the hoop, another blocking foul. And this time it'll go against Amir Sims as he was in the restricted area. And two shots coming up here for Hudson. Nice handle, and you're right, he's in the restricted arc. And when you were in that position, you were going to get that foul automatically. Hudson, a 71% free throw shooter, missing the first. Mass substitutions here for Clemson. Shelton Mitchell, Dante Grantham, and Elijah Thomas all come back in for the Tigers. Yeah, a bunch of starters back in the game. DeAndre Ballard back in for the Gators, replacing Chris Chioza. Again, it's one of those times, if you're Mike White, you get Chioza that extra couple of seconds breathing room because you're at 12.04 on the clock, the under-12 timeout. Maybe you save one possession. Underneath. Good defense by Hayes, altering the shot by Thomas. They have not been able to take advantage of Thomas at all in this game. That was a deep three by Hudson. And the rebound comes out. Allen, kick out. Ballard, the baseline jumper, no. Kulichov, the offensive rebound. A fresh 30. Allen, Hudson for three. And he gets fouled on the three-point attempt by David Scarra. And this will be three shots coming up at the free throw line when we come back. The Florida Gators, all of their points have been scored thanks to Jalen Hudson. 
8-9. Gators over the Tigers here in the first half. We could say it's 11-9. Jalen Hudson over the Tigers. <laughs> and we're going to show you some of those. Three-point shot wide open. you got to be close to him. When you do, he's got the ability to drive. He's also got some pumps. So you got to protect the basket. If you leave him, that is a no-no. 11 points already for Hudson. That's the good news. The bad news is nobody else has made a shot. Igor is 0 for 2. Allen is 0 for 2. Chios is 0 for 1. And DeAndre Ballard's 0 for 1. So Hudson's 4 of 6. The rest of his team is 0 for 6. Yes, he now has 12 points. 2 of 3 at the line. SEC very strong this year, stronger than expected. Florida got as high as number five, number 22 right now. Kentucky, of course, is always good, but Texas A&M is surprising in a very, very positive way. One of three at the free throw line on that trip for Jalen Hudson. Three-point lead for the Gators. We got rotating point guards right now for Clemson. Marquise Reed is handling the ball out front now. They have not been able to take advantage of Thomas' size advantage on Kulachov at all in this game so far. Good adjustment by Marquise Reed. Marquise Reed now with six points here for the Clemson Tigers to make it a one-point game. Reed is one of those guys. We had a guy, uh, Jeffrey Carroll, who made uh, the Thousand Point Club at Oklahoma State, and uh, Reed is 18 away from that in this game. Entered the game 18 points shy. Now with my quick math, he's 12 shot. <laughs> Way to go. Allen, top of the key three, and hey, guess what? Somebody else is on the scoreboard for Florida. Where you been, k -Rong? First team all preseason SEC. He is not playing like a first-team All-SEC player. I think there's an adjustment period with the two transfers taking a lot of shots. Allen has stepped into the background, and I'm not so sure that's a great thing for Florida. Grantham putting it on the floor. Jump stop. Thomas, too strong. Grantham gets the offensive rebound. He puts it up. No. Thomas gets another offensive rebound. Kulichov slow to get up. Underneath is Grantham open with the dunk. And that's the kind of dunk you like to see with authority at two hands. Well, he's got two dunks in this game, and the reason he got it was Kulichov was on the deck. He got hit in the face on the rebound action. Mike White is not happy about that right now. Allen. There you go. Runner. Got one from three, now gets one from two. Those are the kind of plays that made him an all-SEC selection. He needs to do more of it. Kulichov is still... Flexing his facial muscles. And a foul away from the ball against Elijah Thomas. Watch the, script, the offensive foul right here. It's not, it wasn't called an offensive foul. Because Igor's on the deck, this pass becomes available. That's his man. And it's an easy dunk for Grantham. Nice pass by Reed as well. Kavarius Hayes goes out. Gorjak Gak comes in, now Chioza in, and Hudson goes out. And now for Clemson, Shelton Mitchell will come in. And going out is David Scarra. Well, obviously, there are a lot of substitutions in this game on both sides. We had that in our first game as well. I think Florida is a little bit deeper team. Allen for three. That was the heat check. How about Grantham going up high for that rebound? He can handle. I like the movement. Reed, good crossover. And a traveling violation called against Elijah Thomas. It was a good feed for him, and he just shuffled the feet. I think Coach Pat Brownell is upset right now. I'm not sure he's upset with his player or the officials, but they have made a concerted effort to get the ball to Elijah Thomas because of his size advantage in the five spot, and it has not proven to be effective in this game. Florida is stinging like bees a little bit in there with the little guys, and he's getting caught for travels, and uh, Hayes has done a nice job on him staying between him and the basket. 
Kulichov picked up by Grantham. Grantham wants this challenge, and he was a bit too aggressive. He'll be called for the foul. The Rangers foul, charge number 32, Dominic Grantham, the shooter first. Kulichov wants this as well. And they get to talking to one another. Big smile. Kulichov is from Russia, grew up in Israel, played for the Israeli under national teams, you know, and all of those, and uh, went to Arizona State, went to high school here in Florida, went to Arizona State, then Rice, now here. He's one of those guys who's been to three colleges. So would it be appropriate to say Happy Hanukkah? I guess so, yes. Another foul, this time called against Shelton Mitchell. Here's the bio of Kulichov. Played his freshman year at Arizona State, then went to Rice. Now a grad transfer here in Florida. Raising a kibbutz in Israel. Tough kid playing a position that is unaccustomed for a guy his size. It's four spot. Comes up short, rebound by Thomas. DeVoe for three. Got it. Gabe DeVoe shooting 37% from three this year. Makes it a one-point game with under eight to go here in the first half. Gioza turned the corner. Kick out. Allen for three. His second three of the half. Kayvon Allen. Last year shot 37% from three. This year at just 29%. Now Thomas out of control. And we're going to have a foul called against Gak before the travel. 7.35 to go here in the opening half. It's a four-point lead for the Florida Gators. And Kayvon Allen is starting to heat up. Two of them from downtown for Florida. 20 points for the Gators have been scored by two players, Jalen Hudson and Kayvon Allen. 12 and 8, respectively, for those two guys. So if we play a few more minutes, they might get a third guy in, you know. <laughs> by the time we get to the second half, five guys may have scored for the Gators. Very, very unusual game that we're seeing here right now. Uh, kind of disjointed by both teams. Florida is not in their normal run and shoot and make a bunch of threes action. Clemson is not taking advantage of their balance that they usually have in games. Thomas is 0 for 5 from the field. He's got five rebounds, but they were trying to go to him. Hudson, of course, has been the star of this game. And Allen, first team preseason all SEC. They would like to see him fulfill those expectations. Not that he's playing bad this year, I don't mean that, but uh, I think he can play better than he's played so far. Absolutely, yeah. Small team, when you're small, you gotta make up for it in some other way. Shooting, quickness, double teaming, getting loose balls. Good look, Grantham able to hang, can't finish though. Nice play by Gak, challenging, right? Hudson against Grantham, the crossover. Hudson, he gets challenged and blocked by Thomas. Mike White juggling his uh, center position very well in this game. Hayes is going to play most of the time, but Gak right here is challenging this shot. Short on the three by DeVoe, stolen here by Reed. Grantham, good pump fake to the hoop off the glass. That's an educated play right there. He's been around a long time at Clemson, is starting most of his years as a senior now. Grantham is shooting 66% from the field, averaging 16 points a game. He doesn't miss much. Takes good quality shots. Has started 104 of 105 games played in his Clemson career. And a foul on the floor. That'll be the seventh team foul against the Tigers. Careless ball handling can lead to easy plays by your opponent. And that was careless by the Gators. And as a result, a pump fake and a drive to the basket. Two dunks and a layup for Grantham so far in this game. 
That foul was called against Elijah Thomas, his second, team seventh. Jalen Hudson to the free throw line. Hudson just two of five at the line. He's got 12 points on the day. This is one on one. And he gets the roll here. Well, Donnell is going to see some extended minutes, number five and white right here, because of the two fouls on Thomas. I don't think Brad Brownell will bring his starting center back in the game until the second half, being as it's a close game right now. But fortunately for him, Donnell has a lot of experience playing at Michigan. Has a brother who's a lineman for the Ravens. He has played in five NCAA tournament games. This is Donnell setting the screen here. Fly trap into the game for the first time. The freshman from East Dover, South Carolina for Clemson. Mitchell, pull up from the elbow, got it. Love it. That's a shot that he should be taking. 6'3", 190. That's the kind of plays he should make. He played great against Ohio State when they won on the road there. And 19 in that one. Three, no good. Pull it off, and here comes Clemson once again right back at you as Mitchell to the hoop has it blocked by Hudson off the glass. Allen thought about stepping back, pays all the way. Now that's some nice handling right there. Good hands by Hayes, too. That pass was close to him. Sometimes a big guy's going to drop that. Mitchell wants the screen. You can see Florida is much more effective in transition than they are in half court. I think Clemson would prefer the five on five half court game. Shot clock down to eight in the corner. It's Reed for three. Got it. Nice execution, right? Five guys touch the ball. The ball moves from one side of the floor to the other. They get a clean three. One point game, under five to play here in the first half. Chios has been quiet here in the opening half. Good bounce pass. Bullets off. And a blocking foul will be called here against Marquise Reed, which will send Kulich off to the free throw line. I think if you take the shot clock and divide it into thirds, right here, terrific play right here. Nice pass, Kulich off in the right place. I think Florida would like to score in the first 10 seconds if they can when they get the ball, whether it's a turnover or a rebounder in a push or even on a made field goal. You don't score 100 points four times by waiting till the end. <laughs> that's right. That's right. And 80, 83 against Duke, right? Um, so I think that's that. what Mike White would like to do. And I think the players would like to do that. However, when you play like that, sometimes you don't pay enough attention to the defense. So really, you have to get back quickly, find your man quicker than normal. And they did that against Cincinnati. Their game against Cincinnati was a significant step forward for these Gators. Now keep in mind, most of their guys from last year are gone. I mean, Casey Hill and Devin Robinson and you know, all those guys, I mean, they are no longer wearing the uniform. Mitchell picked up now by Kulichov. Mitchell gets bumped, and he's able to put it in. I like what Clemson's doing here, Justin. They have decided that passing the ball into the post and taking advantage of their size is not the way to go. So now the guards are becoming much more involved in driving the ball to the basket. And right here you see an example of it, right? The middle is clear. It's a little hesitation dribble. And a nice little play, and they've scored three or four baskets like that. So a whistle is going to be blown right now by Lee Cassell. And the reason for this is there's moisture on the floor. And now Brad Brownell is furious because he's saying, how do you blow the whistle when the ball was being put in play and the player slipped when there is no contact? Well, there's moisture on the floor because this arena is a hockey arena. It's the home of the Florida Panthers. And in our first game, they blew the whistle because there was moisture, there's humidity. Right, we had that situation, and the official fell on yeah. that play that you're describing. And so right here, as opposed to a turnover, they're going to give the ball back to Florida. I understand why Brad Brownell would be upset, but it's why the official just blew the whistle there. How would you handle that as a coach? 
I'd be screaming, probably get a technical. <laughs> <laughs> Allen with the crossover, step back jumper, got it. Oh, cave on all Allen starting to heat up. Welcome back. Good to see you in your junior year, Kayvon. Three-point lead for the Gators. He's good when he can use the dribble to get his momentum into his shot. Not as good on the standstill stuff. Gioza jumps the passing lane. Gioza has it blocked. DeVoe with a really good job getting back on defense. Now a jump ball, possession arrow for the Gators. I don't understand why Chioza shot that underneath the basket. He had a clean shot going in from the left-hand side, and he didn't take it. 28-25, Gators. Gators up three, 28-25. We're going to show you an interesting play right here on Gabe DeVoe takes a look at the clock. We're going to show you. He's dribbling out. Watch him right here. He takes a look at the shot clock before he makes the pass, and as a result, he loses sight of the defense, and then the ensuing steal happens because of that. Did not know where Chioza was. Now, Chioza makes a mistake here. He goes underneath the basket, and he had an easy layup. Right here, you see it. He has an easy layup on the left side, and he double dips and comes over to this side and makes it a difficult play. Turns into a jump ball situation. So on that possession arrow, Florida maintains possession. Kayvon Allen, he's got 10 in the opening half. Pulls up. Misses. DeVoe with the rebound. Three-point lead for the Gators. 3.15 to play here in the first half. Justin Kutcher alongside Bob Wenzel and Jessica Blaylock here from Sunrise, Florida. DeVoe, the extra pass, now a skip pass. Mitchell for three. He got hit on the arm by DeAndre Ballard. A freshman committing one of the cardinal sins in basketball, fouling a jump shooter and fouling a jump shooter who's shooting a three. Good pass by Donnell. That was great execution by Clemson. All five guys touched the ball. It went from side to side and inside out. And as a result, they got a clean look at the basket. Mitchell, an 83% free throw shooter, misses the first. He still has two more left. You now you talk about fouling the jump shooter and uh, running at the jump shooter. The metrics in the NBA, and this is true in college basketball with good teams also, is you used to t teach your players not to jump up on a guy shooting from the outside. Now you do because the points per possession on made threes are much better, much better points per possession than on twos that are contested. So you want to run the guy off of the three-point line and make him take a shot that's, you know, on the move. But a difference is it used to be that you didn't want to teach a guy to go to block the shot. Now you want to run him off, so almost run sideways to get him to put the ball on the floor. Right. Or jump up in the air. You know, jump up right. in the air. The look-ahead pass was too much for Donnell. And now you can see... Grantham is Grantham, talking to his yeah. teammates here and, and saying, hey, guys, you know, this is not the way we do things. Settle you don't want to throw a pass 65 feet to your center running full speed down the middle of the, the court. So the senior trying to assert himself here a little bit with his group, and they should listen to him. And Grantham's a cool cat. ACC Media Days shows up, suit, no socks on with the shoes. And it was stylish. <laughs> Kulichov, there you go, Ron Adam puts the ball on the floor, dribble, hits the three. Nice teamwork between he and Allen right there. Four-point lead now for the Gators. They can explode. When you shoot a lot of threes and guys get in a groove, you can go on a run, which can make the difference in a game. Two-minute spurt. Mitchell underneath the extra pass. Donnell for three. That's long. And Kulichov with the rebound. Here comes Florida. Looking to push. They do. Hudson. Offensive foul against Jalen Hudson. There to draw the foul is Marquise Reed. On the move with the left hand. Uh, I don't know if I agree with that. 
Well, you can be moving. You don't have to be standing still to take a charge, but he was on his side, I thought. He was on his way down, too. Already. He was on his hip. <laughs> Maybe a break for the Tigers. DeVoe, the corner three, knocks it down. They take advantage of a potential break. Looked like Florida was in a matchup zone right there. I'm not sure that everybody was in the same thing, to tell you the truth. Chioza for three to answer right back. There you go. The three as a weapon. First points of the day for Chris Chioza, who's averaging just under 12 per game. You'll see him in the second half if it's a close game. He dominates the ball. Did it against Cincinnati in the waning three minutes. Kept the ball the whole time until they got a shot. DeVoe, pull up, got it, and the foul. This foul against Kavarius Hayes. That was a nice play. DeVoe is 6'3", 200 pounds, and he pulls up. Look at his eyes on the basket here. Goes straight up to avoid the foul, and he's going over a shot blocker. Hayes has 18 blocks on the year, had 60 last year. So again, Mike White juggling his five spot. Today, it's Hayes and Gack. Sometimes it's Stone. In January, it will be Egbunu. Mm -hmm. And Stone picked up those early two fouls. DeVoe knocks down the... Free throw. Chioza picked up the dribble, now gets it back from Gak. Cut off along the baseline. Allen looks up to see the shot clock. Nice D. Gak, he gets fouled hard by DeVoe. DeVoe went up for the block, and that'll send Gorjak Gak to the free throw line for two. That was a hard, hard foul by Gabe DeVoe. Hey! That guy's played a lot of games in the ACC, and he read his scouting report on who to foul. You don't want to give up a dunk in that situation. Send Gak to the free throw line. Five for nine at the line, now six for ten. I like that foul. I mean, he went yep. to the block. Absolutely. It was a hard foul. Make him earn it. Absolutely. Thomas comes back in with two fouls. The reason he's back in is just for offense. They feel he's a better offensive rebounder, better offensive player. They don't think they can risk a getting a foul with only 32 seconds, and they're going to get possession of the ball. One of two at the line. Chiosa with the offensive rebound. Gak with the follow. How about Chiosa? Smallest guy in the floor. Can you relate? Man, oh, man. What a great play. And that was after they brought Thomas in to get the rebound. Exactly. Unbelievable. What a great play by Chioza. Take a look at him right here. He just out jumps everybody. There's nothing to it. He wanted a foul, but Gak got the ball back in the duck. Two mistakes. Nobody blocked Gak out either at the free throw line. Chioza averages 5.3 rebounds per game. They list him at six feet. That might be generous. And uh, he just went over Elijah Thomas, who's 6'9". And, and he's cut, isn't he, though? I mean, you take a look at Chioza. I mean, he's, well, that's he's how been I in the weight room. Yeah, 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 that's how you relate. Yeah. You're in the weight room, I know. <laughs> I checked you this morning. 37-33, <laughs> Florida leading with 19.6 seconds to go here in the first half. Gak's done a good job in this game. You know, he has problems with his with his uh, knee, so he can't play a lot of minutes. Sometimes he doesn't even practice, but he's done a very good job in this game. That's a push-off by it Mitchell. Is. That's a foul against Grantham. No, no oh, Mitchell, Mitchell, you're Mitchell, right, Mitchell. yes. Push-off by Mitchell. And what a change here, right? I mean, Florida goes and misses a free throw, and it should be Clemson's ball and try to score. Instead, Florida gets the uh, the two, and now they got a chance to score again. And they have to get Elijah Thomas out. A timeout is used here by Florida. 15.2, you would think they're going to try to hold it for the final shot. And like you mentioned, a huge swing. They got a lot of options here. 
Mike White has a lot of choices as to who he wants handling the ball and where he wants to go. What they have to be cautious about is on a miss, you don't want to get an offensive foul in this situation because the bonus is in effect. As far as foul trouble in this first half, Mitchell now has two. Thomas has two for Clemson. Stone has two, right, for Florida? Hayes, Ballard, Stone all have two for the Gators. Well, Jalen Hudson's the best scorer, but he might not be the best guy in this particular situation putting the ball on the floor and going. With 15 seconds, if it was seven seconds, I wouldn't say Chioza, but with this amount of time, I would say Chioza. Let him create something, draw double teams, and then find somebody. Kayvon Allen with the ball. Well, they're going to isolate 1-4 one here. He's going to go one-on-one. -on -one. Picked up by Mitchell, who's got those two fouls. Allen. Kulichov. Three seconds. Fading away. 4-3. Got it. Just like he got He grabbed it. <laughs> what a shot. Fading to his left. He was on his way to the locker room on this shot. Check it out. He's running this way. Bottom. Three gore. Knocks it in from deep. Big lift for the Gators. Kulachov with eight points in the first half, and what a swing it was to end this first half. Now leading by seven, let's go over to Jessica Blaylock. Thanks so much, Justin. What a shot by Kulachov to end that first half. Coach, you recently challenged your guys to be tougher, both mentally and physically. Have you seen them respond in this game? I, I don't mind our physical toughness in this one. We've thrown our bodies around a little bit. We've first to the floor for a few loose balls, uh, a couple of which we didn't come up with, but um, I like our physical effort. Mental toughness comes into play at times when we when we freak out a little bit, especially offensively. Uh, we're trying to just hit grand slams in the first five seconds of the shot clock. Sometimes the guys want it a little bit too much. We've got to settle in, play with more maturity. Hey, speaking of offense, it did not take Jalen Hudson long to get to double digits as far as scoring. Did you see other guys step up based on the way he was playing? He got us off to a good start offensively. It's nice to... Uh, you know, one of the one of the only times this year where we actually got off to a good start, and um, I thought that gave us a little bit of a confidence boost. And some other guys have stepped up, obviously, and hit some shots. Uh, that one will take, uh, not how we drew it up, but uh, nice to have Igor on your team for one of those shots. Appreciate the time. Thanks so thank much, you. Justin. Back to you. All right, Jess. Thank you very much. Yeah, nice to have Igor on your team for that kind of a shot to end the half. Hudson's got 14, Allen's got 10, Kulachov's got eight, and the Gators lead by seven over the Clemson Tigers here at the half. Back with more from Sunrise, Florida after this. Happy holidays here from Sunrise, Florida. Getting set to start the second half, the seven-point lead for the Gators. And, and Bob, I don't know about you, but thinking about this first four to five minute stretch, I think it's critical for the Clemson Tigers right now to get back into it, not let Florida build this lead. I think what's gonna happen here for Clemson, if I'm Brad Brown now, I wanna emphasize who's doing well. And the three guards are playing well right now. And they have a history. I mean, when they won at Ohio State, 19 for Mitchell, 22 for Reed. I think those guys and DeVoe need to step up. DeVoe long on the three. The rebound comes back out to him. The alley-oop. And an offensive foul is going to be called here against Elijah Thomas. Let's go and check in with Jessica Blaylock. Hey, guys. Coach Brunell, pretty positive coming out of the locker room. He said both teams have played well. It's been back and forth. It was really that last minute that hurt us. We made a couple of mistakes, and that's the difference in the game right now. And also, that was the third foul against Elijah Thomas. So he picks up his third in the first 30 seconds of the second half. DeVoe wants to do a job on Hudson. He is guarding him tightly. You don't want to help on Hudson. You want to stay with him the whole time. If you get into help position, you're going to get fouled. Kulachov misses the three. Offensive rebound. Another opportunity here for the Gators. Wow. Keith Stone got that offensive rebound. Chioza with some English off the glass. 
Nine point lead now for the Gators, largest of the game. Joseph's playing in a lot of big games and played well against big time competition. He wasn't doing much in the first half. You talked about it, and I think predicted that he was going to do a lot in the second half. And if they need it, he will. DeVoe misses another three, another good rebound by Stone. Allen. Five guys outside the three point line. And now an offensive foul against Stone. And that is going to be number three against him. Chris Chioza on the move. Shoots this on the way down. Almost hits the floor with his feet. And puts the little spin on it. That was a difficult shot. So with Stone picking up his third, Tavarius Hayes comes back in for the Gators. Also in is Mark Donnell here for Clemson, number five. He can stretch the floor with a three. Hayes did a very good job in the first half defensively and rebounding. Grantham along the baseline. His pass now picked off by Chioza. Chioza again going to that right side. Makes it more difficult. Able to put it in, but an 11-point lead now for the Gators. How about his stoic approach? You never see Chioza cheering for himself. I mean, he just made a terrific steal on that anticipation play. It's a 10-0 run going back to the first half, and that snaps the 10-0 run for the Gators. Hudson doesn't have many touches here in this half. That was dribbled off the foot. Kulichov, kick out. Here is Hudson, his first touch for three. Hey, he said he didn't have much touches. I better shoot it. <laughs> He didn't have to touch it long before he launched. Hudson's now got 17 in the game. They're looking for the roll. They got a mismatch. Donnell had Hudson on him. Grantham. About 14, no. Gets his own miss. Puts it up, and he'll go to the free throw line for two. This foul will be called against Igor Kulichov. On the move, the pull-up jump shot. It goes long, but because he's got such a size advantage, he gets the offensive board. At the free throw line is Grandma. Two shots. Grantham knocks down the first one. He's been around a long time. Entering this game, he was 25 points away from 1,000. He's going to be in that club pretty soon. Lawson Game was a terrific player for them last year. Their most recent guys had great success from Clemson in the NBA is Trevor Booker. Had Larry Nance and Grant, Eldon Campbell, all of those guys. Going way back, huh? Yeah, that's way back. Chioza against Grantham. Kick out to the corner. Chioza, that pass picked off by DeVoe. They don't have numbers. Good job by Florida getting back on defense. Mitchell, good ball fake. Wild shot gets bailed out with a foul. Notice the ball fake to the left, and that's why he got past Kulichev and a lot of traffic around the basket. Lathalas charged against DeAndre Ballard, his third. Mitchell's 83% from the line, so he's almost automatic. Coming into this game, 45 assists, 18 turnovers. So he's their most reliable ball handler. Mike Okaru will replace DeAndre Ballard. Already... Three team fouls against the Gators. Okaru, I don't think, uh, was in in the first half at all. It's point card back up. Two minutes. Full court pressure. What kind of variety? Looks like a 2-2-1. This can slow the game down, keep yep. the base, keep the... Press doesn't always increase tempo. You can use a press to decrease tempo also. I think they're faking zone here. They're really in man-to-man. -man. 
Chioza fading away, high off the glass. Pretty shot by Chris Chioza. He had to do it too, because Donnell stepped out on him, the 6'10 player. He shot it right over him. Well done. Nine points now for Chioza. DeVoe gets fouled on the three by Kayvon Allen. And when we come back, three free throws for Gabe DeVoe. But the Gators led by seven at the half. They lead by ten right now. Ten-point lead for the Gators now with 15.46 to go in the second half. We talked about Chris Chios in the first half. Was quiet, starting to pick things up here in the second half. Leads the SEC in assists per game at 6.1, but he's going to lose scoring in the second half. These are things of beauty. Look at that anticipation on the pass outside of the post. He has a tendency to shoot the spin off the right side of the backboard, and I love this. On the switch, he senses the height of Donnell and shoots it very high off the board. Very intelligent player. Had 15 points, six assists, four rebounds in their last game against Cincinnati. You can see in the first half, invisible, pretty much scoring, but handling the ball and playing D. Bo misses the free throw. On the season, he was 12 of 14 prior to that miss. Three free throws for Gabe DeVoe after he got fouled by Kayvon Allen prior to going to commercial break. All ACC academic team. One of three at the line. The rebound for Jalen Hudson. Hudson has one touch on offense and a made three. Let's see if he gets another touch here in this position. There it is. Does he give it up? No. <laughs> has it blocked by Donnell. You know, when you're a volume scorer like he is, he's averaging 19 points a game. If you don't touch the ball for long periods of time, you get a little anxious. You go through a draw. Yeah, <laughs> and, and you, you know, you're going to make a play when you do get it. Kulichov, the jumper is short. And the rebound is pulled down by Shelton Mitchell. This is opportunity knocking right here for Clemson. Lard is kind of in a little bit of a rut. Reed off the glass, got it, and the foul. So they go, last possession and make a uh, two free throws. And right here in transition, a beautiful move by Reed and off the glass and in with the foul. Hesitation dribble is really, really nice. Gag at 6'11", could not even touch that basketball. Reed converts the three-point play. Important possession right here for Florida now. They had a big lead. It's closing in. It's down to six right now. They need to get a quality shot. We saw an upset in the first game here at the Orange Bowl basketball classic as Oklahoma State knocked off previously undefeated Florida State 71-70. And this is out of bounds off of Florida. And right now, number 22, Florida leads Clemson by six. As Kulichoff will go to the bench, Kayvon Allen comes in. You talk about a small team in here. Hudson's the second biggest guy out there on the floor right now. He is guarding Grantham. Hudson 6'6", Grantham 6'9". Got to get a team effort on the boards here. Reeve, who's this foul going to be on? Well, It'll be against Michael Carter. Sorry, Judson. They drove left, redrove left the last time, and drove right this time. And I think what Coach Brownell did at halftime was he said, hey, uh, you know, I mean, the two post guys are not doing it. They're three for 11, so we've got to put it on the floor and go to the basket. And those three guards, Mitchell and Reed and uh, DeVoe, are really stepping up this half. So that was the sixth team foul against Florida. At the free throw line, Clemson is now 10 of 15. The next foul, and Clemson shooting free throws the rest of the game. They could be in the bonus with 13 minutes to go. Yeah, yeah. Significant. 
Again, we talked about this in the open for this Florida team up and down, up and down. They were ranked as high as number five. You have losses against number one Duke. Understandable. 87-84, but you had that big lead. You lose to Florida State, you got blown out. Here's Hudson for three. No, and the rebound for Reed. A chance to bring it to within one. DeVoe fouls on the floor, but that'll be the 17th foul. This is against Chioza. It'll be one and one. This is what's interesting. Brennell has done a very good job coaching here. What he has done with his defense, as you take a look at that foul, he's gone to a 2-2-1, two -two which has slowed Florida down. Florida likes to play in transition. So the last four possessions, Florida's played, walk the ball up the court, and play five on five, which they do not want to do. And as a result, Clemson's getting right back into the game. Very nice job. Sitting on 299 career wins as a head coach. Number 300 tonight would be pretty sweet for him. Every time they get to the free throw line, there's a stoppage of play and they can get into their press. So it's a 2-2-1 two -two variety. They're not trying to make Florida turn the ball over. You can see it right there. Two guys on the front line, two guys on the second line. And just kind of back up, make Florida walk the ball up the floor, which is what they're doing right now. A 12-2 run for the Clemson Tigers. Kulich off to Gak. Shot clock at eight. Kulich off. Bounce pass underneath. Gak can't handle it. Too low. Clemson can take the lead with a three. Remember, they're shooting free throws the rest of this game. And hence what you want to do is drive the ball to the basket. That way you're going to get fouled more. Perimeter guys wanting to go one-on-one. -on -one. Mitchell, he turns the corner to the hoop. Doesn't get the roll. Gak on the floor, Donnell. And Donnell was on the baseline when he had his hand on the ball, so he's out of bounds, and it will be Florida basketball. That's too bad, because it's a great hustle play. Gak tries to block this ball, and he does not foul. He just goes straight up with his arms, and then on the rebound, there's a lot of physicality going around here. Officials made the right call. The officials came up to us during a timeout and said the floor is slick out here, and we noted that in the first half where several players went down and actually one of the three officials went down on a slippage in the in the first game keep the ball boys busy yeah exactly same thing again look at this geos is walking the ball up the floor for a team that averages just under 88 points per game this is not the way they want to play Chioza cut off, kicks it out. Allen, good shot by Kayvon Allen, able to avoid the charge and put it in. That is not an easy shot. In the last four minutes of the Cincinnati victory, Chioza had the ball the entire possession, just dribbled around, dribbled around, tried to find a hole, and then one pass and somebody took the shot. That's what they need to be doing right now. Devon. Should be a backcourt violation. It will be a backcourt violation. Backcourt violation. Mike White was kind of wondering, um, did I miss something? <laughs> <laughs> they got it. Fly Trap will come in now to replace Shelton Mitchell. Mitchell did a nice job when he was in there. The combination of he and Reed and DeVoe has been pretty solid in the second half. Especially Reed, number two, Garden Chioza here. Offensively, he's been very good. Allen uses that screen, pulls up for three. No, and the rebound is pulled down by Trapp. Trapp's got to be careful not to carry that basketball. They called one coming in the, in the first game. You don't see it very often. I think it should be called more often, frankly. It's hard to guard a guy when you allow him to do that, and he's got speed. Shot clock down to 10. Trap. Hold on. Got it. How about that? Hey, coach, I want more playing time is what he's saying. He Six gets a rebound. Freshman. Gets a rebound as soon as he gets in the game, then scores there. Chioza. 
Draws the foul, and he'll go to the free throw line when we come back as Mark Donnell fouls him. Two-point game here in Sunrise, Florida. Don't go anywhere. Another good one. Two-point lead for the Gators, 11.52 to go here in the second half as they lead Clemson. And let's check in with Jessica Blaylock. Hey, Justin, Metro PCS understands that behind every good team is a great team mom. They have been honoring team moms for almost 16 years now. Some of these ladies beside me represent the eight football teams that participate in the Orange Bowl Youth Alliance League. They were voted on by teams, by coaches, by fans for being some of the best team moms around. They do a little bit of everything. They organize carpools, they make snacks, and they are the best cheerleaders around. They were honored at the half, and they deserve it. Awesome. Thank you very much, Jess. Always remember growing up, playing youth sports, the team moms, how important they were. Never, never stops. <laughs> Chris Gioza at the free throw line for two. Reed, Mitchell, and DeVoe. 14, 8, and 14 in the game. They were 9, 6, and 9 in the first half. Those guys contributing heavily to the offense in the second half. Gioza is a guy who can take over, and he's starting to do it. He's getting much more aggressive in the offensive end with what he's trying to do. He's keeping the ball in his hands most of the time. One of two at the line. The rebound is tipped, though, to Ballard. Another opportunity here for the Gators, up by three. Chioza gets switched on, picked up by Donnell. Ballard able to put it in. That's a big possession right there for Florida. Now a five-point lead. That's a freshman doing that, too, in a crunch time play. Florida's in a semi-zone here. One, two, two variety, but they're extending it. DeVoe, kickball by DeVoe, they're gonna say. The ball was touched by Allen and then DeVoe kicked it. Fast hands by the Gators there. Chioza is leaving the game right now. You can see that. The official had it all the way. Lee Cassell, the official with the call. With Chioza on the bench right now, Allen becomes the primary ball handler here. So it'll be interesting to see if Reed rise, tries to put heavy pressure on him because Allen's really more of a two. Stone back in. Stone with three fouls. Nearly picked up his fourth right there. Has a size advantage. And he throws that one away right to DeVoe. Stone and Dak in at the same time. Big lineup for Florida. Haven't said that very often. No, though. exactly. Not all year, right? DeVoe trying to go against Gak off the glass with the left, puts it in. Intelligent play. How about DeVoe? He's a senior. The last play, kicks the ball, thinks nothing of it, and the next time he comes down, puts it on the floor, shoots it with his off hand over a 6'11 guy. Confidence. Zone. The three is good by Jalen Hudson. 20 points now for Hudson. He got a clean shot because of the screen against the zone. Nobody was there to pop out. Devone, free throw line. No. Jack with the rebound. When he goes on, you got to have the bigs in, right? Got to protect the paint. They can be in there. They don't have to hedge out on the top screens out high. Ballard, crossover, pull up, got it. A freshman in rhythm. He's a mid-range guy. Very confident player. And a timeout taken here by the Clemson Tigers. They had it to within two. And now Florida on a run of their own has made it an eight-point lead. The good news for Florida is Chioza's on the bench, and they're still scoring. 
the freshman from 17 feet. Swish. By eight over the Clemson Tigers. And this Florida team was ranked as high as number five. They're now ranked number 22. But the SEC, a conference that is known more for football than basketball, but this year, basketball, it's much improved. Yeah, I mean, they're always pretty solid in basketball, but, I mean, good stuff this year. Uh, Colin Sexton is a point guard at Alabama, leads the league in scoring, and uh, there's a bunch of freshmen at Kentucky, as always. That's, that never happens. Yeah. <laughs> Texas A&M is very, very good. So uh, the SEC on an uptick right here. Alley-oop to Dante Grantham out of the timeout, and that's a really good play out of the timeout by Brad Brownell. No doubt about it. You throw cross-court because the wing on the opposite side is a small guy, and when the ball gets moved, he's got to cover the block. And you can throw it right over him, which they did. Grantham's got 10 as they double Hudson, who picks up the dribble. Now steps through. That should have been a travel ball on the floor. Somehow, Florida maintains possession. Hudson to the hoop. No, the tip is no good by Gack. And here comes Clemson. A lot of physicality on that series of plays. And now Grantham turns it over. Ballard back the other way. His pull-up short. And the rebound by Reed. And now Reed will settle things down. You know, freshman give it and take it the way right there. That was not a solid shot on the part of Ballard, and he made two just recently, so he's feeling pretty confident about himself. And now Reed gives it away. Just has the pass go through his hands. When you're trying to make the comeback, you can't have those unforced turnovers. It's going to be a backcourt violation, but that was an unforced one as it just went right through his hands. Yeah. Chioza is back in, and the ball is inbounded. This is a new rule. The ball is inbounded at the 28-foot marker. There's a thing called the line of demarcation, and when something happens in a certain area of the court, it goes to that spot, and then if it's in closer to the basket, it goes to three feet outside of the lane on each side. Chioza rolling to the hoop, puts it in off the glass. Nice pass, too. Three is the call by Mike White. That indicates a change of defense. It looks like a 1-2-2 two, two zone. Now they have Stone and Gack in, so they shouldn't be susceptible to inside play too much. Thomas, his first field goal of the game. Now one of six from the floor is Elijah Thomas, who came in averaging 12.1 points per game and 8.8 rebounds per game. And shooting 71% from the field. How about that? Six-point lead for the Gators. Stone for three. <laughs> Stone was backing up before the ball was even in the basket. Talk about confidence. Nine of 17 from three-point land on the season for Keith Stone. Mitchell, the runner. 64-57. Stone was disappointed a little bit. You know, he's from this part of Florida. He's from Deerfield Beach, which is very close to here. And uh, he's no the normal starter at that position. Gotten foul trouble, as you indicated early. And Hasn't had an opportunity to do a lot in this game. Gack along the baseline for Ballard. Gets it back. Shot clock to eight. Gack going at Thomas. Gets the foul, and he'll go to the free throw line. Keith Stone, number 25 in your program. And if you're from Deerfield Beach, number one in your heart. He's moving backwards before it hits rim. <laughs> Love it. The Metro PCS Orange Bowl Classic brought to you by Metro PCS. High above the BB&T Center here in Sunrise, Florida. The Florida Gators trying to move to 7-3 on the season as they lead here 64-57 over the Clemson Tigers. Jalen Hudson got 20 points. 
Florida, 10 three-pointers on the day. Fifth time this season with at least 10 three-pointers made. Gorjak Gak at the free throw line. Three-point shot, a gigantic part of Mike White's philosophy and the Gators' performance. You're going to see plenty of games where they make 10. Teams that scout them in the SEC will try to run them off of the three-point line, make them put the ball on the floor, and take shots off the dribble. They will then have to adjust to that particular strategic move. They only have 10 turnovers in the game, 14 for the Clemson Tigers. 0 for 2 at the line is Gap. Reed. Everybody thought it was a clean block. Everybody who's a Gator fan, that is. Chioza gets called for the foul. You make the call. Mr. Wetzel. Oh, I thought you were talking to our, about our audience. <laughs> I thought you wanted them to. I thought that was kind of a rhetorical deal. I think what happened is he went straight up in the air, and then when he came down, he got part of his arm on the follow through. Had he gone straight up and left his arms up there, it would have been a miss. It would not have been a block. It would have been a miss. Marquise Reed missed the first. Misses the second. So you know what Rasheed Wallace would say, right? What? Ball don't lie. <laughs> Good foul. Under six to play. Cuts it to the hoop. No. Rebound out of bounds will stay Florida basketball. Hudson got some effortless to his game, doesn't he? I mean, he went around and got to the basket and just kind of floated up there. When you get a guy like that, you sort of focus on the guy guarding him and see how hard he's playing. See how he avoids that charge, jumping to the side that way? There he goes again with the left off the glass. Pretty finished by Hudson. Wow. They are isolating and one-on-one. -on -one. That is a wise decision by Mike White. He's reading things well for his team. Mitchell, no. The tip, no good. Bodies are flying as Thomas went to the ground. They've got numbers that they push it. Hudson for three. The offensive rebound by Kulichov. And Chioza thought about launching the three, then says, you know what? We're up 66-57. Let's take some time. Get a good shot. Chioza nearly splits it with some nifty ball handling. You need a bucket on this possession if you're Clemson. And we're going to have a reach in foul against Chioza. Well, Mike White knew that Hudson was hot. He gets the ball in the right corner over there and hard drive with his left hand. Nobody there to help. Nice design on the play. Take a look at this launch. He gets his body way up there. He has a scorer's mentality. Nobody on the free throw line right here for Clemson. So no opportunity for an offensive rebound if there's a miss. Either that or they're just so confident and lead making both free throws. Well, I think they won the guys back defensively. This is the first time they're going with this defense. It's a 1-3-1 one, one defense. The guy in the back, number two, Marquise Reed, has to run from corner to corner as the ball gets reversed. Trap in the corner. Chioza for three. Off the back of the rim, and the rebound is pulled down by Scarra. That's good coaching by Brad Brownell to pull out a defense that they haven't used the entire game. Coming up on four minutes to go. Reed gets the screen. 
Shot clock down to seven. Grantham gets bumped. Grantham, he gets fouled, and he's going to go to the free throw line. And this foul is going to be against Chioza. And that'll be, I believe, number four against Chioza. Grantham understands what's going out on the floor right here. He's going sideways, and Chioza blocks him. This is a good call. He puts his lower body into the lower body of Grantham and puts his arms straight up to try to draw the attention away from the bump on the bottom. Remember we talked about the free throws and how this could play a role. Well, Clemson is in the double bonus. One of two at the line for Grantham. Clemson only has three team fouls right now. It's a six-point game with 3.55 to go, and now a timeout is taken here by Florida. And we have a timeout on the floor. Mike White wants to talk over his strategy against this 1-3-1 defense, and now you wonder, does Brad Brownell switch up his defense well, on this timeout? That's right. But I, I think since it was successful, I think that Brownell will stick with it. What you've got to do against the 1-3-1 is penetrate into the gaps and then pass to the outside. 66-60, 3.53 to go here in the second half. Florida on top. Point game with... 3.53 to go. Merry Christmas. Mike White called the timeout. We'll see what his strategy is, and we'll also see what Brad Brownell's strategy is. Talk about a crazy day in college basketball. We saw Florida State go down earlier. How about Wichita State, number three in the country, wow. losing to Oklahoma by eight. If you haven't seen Trey Young play, he's a freshman at Oklahoma. 29 points per game, 10 assists. He's averaging 28 on the year. He's the closest thing to Steph Curry that we've seen in college basketball. The guy is unbelievable. Unlimited range. Brad Brown out. We'll see if he stays in the 1-3-1 or if he switches back. As they come out on the floor, it looks like man-to-man. -man. We've got a delay because of an LED board. It's always something. Wow. Some things you just can't make up. <laughs> That'll make you dizzy. I'll tell you what, if you're shooting a free throw and that's going on in the background, that could distract you. One year we had a uh, basketball hoop malfunction. <laughs> and now we have an LED board malfunction. Well, that's what the free throw would look like, and that's what it would look like, um, I don't know, sort of just typical NBA arena stuff to me. So he said it's always something, right? Let's go back to 2015. The basketball stanchion. Oh, yeah, it came down on the dunk. And then it was like, wait a minute, something's not right. That entire basket just moved. They're measuring. Uh, nope, not right. That's not 10 feet. And then they said, let's fix it. Ah, uh, just, just, just hit it. <laughs> that that turned into a uh, a longer delay than we had anticipated, and now we've got this. Well, this is unfortunate because you're talking about um, players getting cold while they're waiting for this, and obviously they want to get going and they want to get out there and play. And you get a delay like this, and after a while, the coach doesn't know what to say. You know, he tells them all the stuff, and you end up standing around, getting stiff. Maybe they could take a vote by the players and say, uh, do you want to wait, or uh, well, can now, you play with this? Now the malfunction continues to move around the arena. Now it's almost 
It's almost directly behind the basket. Well, it's smaller, though. It's only in one little spot now. Before, it was much larger. We've had a slippery floor, an LED board malfunction. I wonder what the Florida Panthers think about this. <laughs> As I recall, when, when the basket malfunctioned a couple of years ago, didn't Jessica go down there and help fix it? <laughs> I think she took the sledgehammer. That's part of the duties yeah. of a sideline. Oh, sure. you better believe I was down there to help out. I just wanted to get that game started. But yeah, we had a good time. Killing time for what, about 45 minutes before that game? Memories, guys, memories. I still have my tap dancing shoes. <laughs> hey, I'm hanging out right now with a couple of these Clemson players as they're waiting for this game to start. Had a chance to listen into the huddle with Coach Brownell, and he said, you know what, guys? Don't play with fear. Don't be afraid to drive to the basket. He likes what he's seeing from his team, especially the intensity. He wants them to finish strong in these last few minutes. All right, it's time to play, brother. The but LED boards are off. Man to man, it's not the 1-3-1. One, one. Like we're going back to 1985. Chioza's going to handle the ball most of the time here. Chioza with the left hand, no, the tip, no good. And here comes Clemson, a chance they could cut it to three with a three. Give Hayes a lot of credit. He almost had a tip in on that. Reed for two, rattles it in. He's been their best player in the second half by far. Marquise Reed, the transfer from Robert Morris. He came in 18 points shy of 1,000 career points. Guess what? Did you just get it? Just got it. He's got 18 points. There you go. Allen gets fouled by DeVoe, and the fans here like it because they're like, finally a foul against Clemson. It's just the fourth team foul. So that's ball out of bounds. Well, Clemson's doing much, much better at the free throw line, and, and you've talked about that. But from the three-point line, the score is 30 to 12 right now. So gigantic difference in the number made. Florida's made 10. Clemson's only made four. Chioza picked up by Reed. When Hayes starts away from the basket and they run pick and roll, and he attacks the offensive glass, he's got opportunity. In the corner, Allen. Shot clock down to three. Chioza sees it. Chioza puts it up with one. Doesn't get the roll, and the rebound comes out to the ball. Four-point game, 2.35 to go. Clemson has gotten good penetration the last couple of possessions. Some pull-up jump shots, drives to the basket. This guy's been the main man, number two, Reed. And now Reed will draw the foul. Is that? It's going to be against Kulichov. And that'll be the second against him, but the double bonus. So Reed goes to the free throw line for two, where he's four of six. Behind the back, between the legs, gets bumped several times. Three-point game, 85% on the year. That's pretty good. When you cross that 78 boundary, you're doing pretty well from the free throw line. Clemson. Non-conference top 25 wins only seven times in their program history. Last year they did it against number 22 South Carolina, 62 to 60. They trail by two right now, coming up on two minutes to go. Florida's number 22 right now. Along the baseline, the floater's no good for Hudson. Rebound and a chance for Clemson to take the lead with a three. They've only led in this game twice. 2-0 and 4-3. Here's the matchup. Reed into the corner. DeVoe for the lead. Got it! Big time. Big, big, big time. 
Johnson, the answer right back. That's long. Lee battling for the rebound. We got a jump ball. Possession arrow will stay Florida. This three setup was something beautiful to watch. Reed drove all the way to the basket, and DeVoe got in the left corner. He's right under the basket, makes that pass, and Reed was, uh, I mean, DeVoe was very confident. It's a 10-0 run for Clemson, 7-0 since that delay. Kulichov. Difficult shot and the rebound by Scarra. But it's taken away. Chioza. How about that? And a timeout. Kid's a winner. Chioza puts Florida back on top by one with 124 left. That's an awful shot right here. He just steals it away, gets it up right away. Hands right on the ball. What a great play by Chioza. Instead of running back on defense, he just went in there and stuck his nose in. Florida has gotten a couple of, of shots in the last couple of possessions that seemed good. They were good quality shots, but they just missed. One timeout left for the Gators, two for Clemson. A guy who's hit big shots in his career, as you mentioned, last year during the NCAA tournament, and now coming up with a big steal and the finish to put his team up by one. Florida's problems in the last few minutes have been at the other end of the floor. Defensively, they have not been able to stop Clemson at all. Marquise Reed has dominated play with his handle. Shelton Mitchell is in there. Here is Marquise Reed. Going to the hoop. Reed has it blocked by the rim. And the rebound by Keith Stone. And now it's a chance to just play defense for Clemson. One minute to go, one point game. Man to man defense. We got three guys who can go one on one Chioza, Allen, and Hudson. Shot clock down to seven. Here's Allen. Shot clock at three. Allen puts up the three. It's short. Up ahead. Thomas with the dunk and the lead. Clemson wanted a timeout. They did not get it. And now Florida takes the timeout with 32 seconds. That was a poorly designed play. When you have Allen with the basketball and Hayes comes up for the screen, you're bringing four players to one spot on the floor. So unless you have a guy who's a super ball handler like Chioza, right here, there's four guys right at the ball. There's no place for him to go as the shot clock is winding down. And as a result, watch Chioza. He tries to run this down. He realizes nobody's back. Not good defensive balance and not a good shot, obviously. And it's one of my pet peeves. I know you have a lead, but to wait to go with seven seconds on the shot clock, well, you're, if, gonna, you're gonna put up a bad shot. If you don't bring the center and his man, you can go with seven or eight seconds to go and get into the lane. If Chioza has the ball or maybe Hudson, but Allen hasn't displayed his ability to put the ball on the floor and go around people. Instead, now it's a one-point lead for Clemson. Six-second difference, shot clock to game clock. Let's see if they get the ball to Hudson instead of Allen in this particular situation. Since he's been able to get past his man, at least he can get to the lane and get a foul. But interesting what Clemson will do, who will they match up on Hudson? And Grantham is a possibility because he's got a little bit more length. And Florida has no timeouts remaining. So they have to be able to get this ball in bounds before the five-second count. How long do you wait to go? Do you go first shot available? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I don't think you... I, I think the longer you wait, the more pressure it puts on your team. You just got to run your stuff and go. It was a one... You want... Game. When you're behind, you want more possessions. It was a one-point game in our first game, 
The victory for Oklahoma State over number 19, Florida State. It's a one-point game here. Here's Chioza. They want Hudson. Hudson's got it, and Hudson gets fouled. And remember, fouls to give. Right. That's just a fifth foul. Number 24, David so that took six and a half seconds off the clock. Well, they reset the clock. It's back to 20. But there's no time. There's no timeouts remaining here for Florida, right. so they right. now have to right. figure out the next play. And there's still another foul to give. Well, they'll get him right here. And there it is. So now there's 20.9 seconds to go. Number 32, his second, team six. So that's the six-team foul. So now the next foul will be one-on-one. Now they want to run the original play before the fouling started. They're going to set a double screen for Hudson. He's going to come over the top. There he goes. Chioza gets cut off. Hesitation. Kick out. Allen for three. Chioza kept it alive. Into the hands. Clemson's got it. They got a foul. There's the foul with 4.4. Solid defense by Clemson. They really did a terrific job. They got on Hudson and didn't allow him to touch the basketball. And Chioza had to create. And when he went into the lane, they... they came in and made it difficult for him center came in thomas came in forced the play to the outside and then everybody goes after the ball right here solid defense by clemson clemson is off to their best start since the 08-09 season a timeout taken here by brad brownell It'll be Marquise Reed to shoot free throws. Reed in this game is seven of nine at the line. And the misses were earlier. He's been to the line lately and has made them. As a team, they're 18 of 26 at the line for the game. For the Florida Gators, if they were to lose this game, they will have lost four of their last five. Their one win being against Cincinnati. Florida is the only team ranked in the top 25 right now that has three losses. Everybody else either has zero, one, or two losses. So the respect comes from the difficulty of the schedule that they have played. I mean, you know, you're playing Duke, you're playing Gonzaga, you're playing Florida State, you're playing Cincinnati, where other teams are playing lesser lights than that. But, you know, certainly if this turns out the way Clemson wants it, Florida will be difficult to stay in the top 25. For Clemson, they open up their ACC play December 30th against NC State. NC State lost today against UNC Greensboro. Wow. Then well, they play at Boston College and against Louisville. Well, we didn't go over Florida State, who lost today. Their first three ACC games, Duke, North Carolina, Miami. Yeah. 4.4 seconds to go here. Two free throws coming up for Marquise Reed. And here in the Orange Bowl Classic, it could be that we see both Florida schools lose. But Clemson has to make both. And even if they make both, Florida still has a shot. Remember last year in the NCAA tournament, Chioza went the length of the court and made a three from the top of the key at Madison Square Garden to send them to the Elite Eight. So they got 69, 70, 71. If they make all three, it's difficult. Let me if ask makes you this. Two, makes two, they got a chance. Well, it's going to be, excuse me, I thought it was Marquis Reed shooting. It's going to be Elijah Thomas. Elijah Thomas. Wow. That's a big difference. That is a big difference. Thomas, a 66% free throw shooter, knocks down the first. Now let me ask this question. If he makes this one right here, do you foul because it's one and one as opposed to letting them try to put up a three to tie the game? Yes, you can, you can foul in the backcourt, but do not try to foul in the front court where if you foul, he can right. pretend he's taking a shot. I thought Marquise Reed was the shooter. So did, so did I. I. I mean, that's when the whistle was blown to me. I'm shocked right now. And I think the checking. official is going over right now. 
Because if, if that's the case, that's when the whistle was blown. So if that's the case, then maybe more time goes on the clock as well. I think they got an issue right here. Yeah. Because he has already taken the free throw. I'm shocked that Brad Brownell would let that happen since Reed is a much better free throw shooter. The problem now is, so let's take a look here. The clock's still running. There's the foul. There's the foul. It's definitely Marquise Reed. And why would Brownell allow Thomas to go to the free throw line when Reed is a better shooter? Their issue right now is they have a allowed Thomas to take the first free throw. Lee Cassell, A.J. Desai, and Chuck Jones, the officials for this game. I mean, there, to me, it's clear that the shooter should be Marquise Reed. Well, Reed is the shooter. The question in my mind, and I've never seen this, so I don't know, um, can they erase the shot that Thomas has taken already? And I'm not sure that that can be done. Where is Mike Pereira when we need him? And we're going to get an explanation coming up here. Appreciate it. All right, so we just so got you the heard. explanation. Yes, yeah, yeah, so correctable error. Yep. And uh, so the free throw that Thomas made will come off the board, and they will give Reed the two shots, which is the correct thing to do. But, I mean, I'm shocked. I, I can't believe that this... My question happened. is, how they not go to the bench and say he's going to be the shooter prior to the timeout being called? Well, there was some pushing, and Thomas is involved. So, obviously, somebody thought that that was the foul. Somebody thought that was the foul, but that was not called. And that was the foul right there. So, Thomas did get shoved to the ground by Igor, but that was not called. So the score is now going to be 69-68. And he's got two. And two free throws here for Reed, who's seven of nine at the line. 20 points, five rebounds, six assists. All right. So that damage is done. That one free throw, it's all good now. Okay, he makes this. Florida still has an opportunity to run the ball down the floor quickly. Whoever has it, I don't think he should pass. I think he should just try to get the shot off. Makes it. Let's see if they foul. Do they let them shoot? They're going to foul right there with 2.4. Smart play. So it's going to be one and one and here for Jalen Hudson. That's a smart play, but I've seen plays where the ball gets to the front court and a guy does that and the offensive player shoots and they give him three free throws. The They're going to bring back Elijah Thomas. Shelton Mitchell goes to the bench. Kavarius Hayes comes in. Kulichov goes out. And now the issue is, do you make the first, try to miss the second? Well, you can front, throw it off the front of the rim. That's a good thing to do. And you put your guys in the second lane to get an opportunity here. Yeah. So now you the, second, the, the second thing that you can do, obviously, if you don't throw it off the front of the rim, what they're doing right now, Clemson has taken two guys back because they're afraid that Allen and Chioza are going to run down the middle. He misses it. And the foul is committed here by Hayes. 1.5 seconds. And David Scora, in his first game in a Clemson uniform, will shoot the free throws. Two free throws coming up. You know, when you miss one, you don't practice missing a lot, right? You know? Um, and I think the best play on a miss, we used to practice this, is to hit it off the front of the rim so it bounces further back so the guy in the second spot, which is your guy, has an opportunity to get his hand on the ball. And now I think the officials will go to the monitor to make sure they have the right person shooting the free throws <laughs> because of the embarrassment from the previous situation. 
But I don't think there is any doubt who should be shooting this one. Well, they're looking at the clock, too, here. Right here, he grabs it. There's the foul. So I think it's a little bit more than 1.5. I think they're going to put a couple of extra tenths of second on the clock. It'll be 2.1 seconds put on the clock. So only three tenths of a second came off the clock. David Scara transfer from Valparaiso in his first game. So it's supposed to be 2.1 seconds. On the clock, it says 2.0. There, it's 2.1. Two free throws here for Scarra. Misses the first. So now if he makes this, it's 2.1 seconds. Reed is attached to Chioza on the hip here. He misses, misses it on purpose. Three, it does not count. And Clemson will get the win against a top 25 non-conference opponent for just the eighth time in school history. Another upset here at the bb &T Center. And Clemson moves to 9-1 on the season, while the Gators fall to 6-4 and, and have dropped four of their last five. Great play down the stretch. Reed was fantastic with his ball handling ability and his ability to get to the lane and get to the free throw line and make a couple of layups. Florida had some shots that were makeable during that same stretch and missed. And then, of course, at the end, we had some problems with uh, who should be shooting the free throws. I was raising my hand to volunteer to get out there and take them. Well, but well played by both teams, really. It was an exciting game. Florida had a difficulty getting a good shot during the last moments of the game, and Clemson got better execution. The Orange Bowl Classic is brought to you by Metro PCS, by the Florida Lar Lottery, and by American Airlines. An exciting day here in Sunrise, Florida. A couple of upsets. Florida State no longer undefeated as they lost to Oklahoma State. And number 22, Florida, goes down at the hands of the Clemson Tigers. For Bob Wenzel, Jessica Blaylock, I am Justin Kutcher saying so long here from South Florida. A fun day indeed. Happy holidays, everybody. Hope you enjoyed it.